In this video, I'm going to introduce a trick of sorts that will take care of initialization of objects for you. Notice that we will not be changing the behavior of our application at all, but this allows for code that is easier to maintain. So notice that the first time we use any of our properties, such as our planets array, self.planets, as well as our added space objects array inside of the add space object method, so self.added space objects, we have to initialize our NS mutable array here. And we had to do the same thing in view did load. This can cause a major issue if you forget to write this code because our NS mutable won't exist, but because we have a property variable name, we'll still be able to call the method add object on this property and we'll be adding our objects to an array that doesn't exist. Well, wouldn't it be convenient if we never had to check, but this initialization would automatically be done for us? We can go through a process called lazy instantiation. So first let's remind ourselves of what happens to properties behind the scenes. Every time you're using the dot notation, you're actually calling a method. Well, we're going to be able to write our instantiation inside of our getter method. So let's go up. We can scroll up to the top of our file here. And let's add a pragma mark so we can organize all of our instantiations. We're going to do pragma mark, lazy instantiation of properties. And we can do NS mutable array. And let's start typing planets and notice that it auto completes for us. And this was the getter method we learned about earlier. So we're going to be able to say if not planets, and we're going to use our curly braces here. We're going to say planets is equal to NS mutable array alloc in it. And we'll return our planets array. So what's going on here? Well, the first time and any time in the future, we call using the dot notation, the method planets, in order to access our instance variable planets, we're gonna call this method planets. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna say, if you don't currently have an instance variable set up, and this instance variable doesn't have a value, we're gonna go ahead and allocate and initialize some memory for us. And we're going to return this instance variable, which you're going to be able to access using self.planets in order to access this array of planets. So we're going to be able to write a similar line of code uh, or a similar method here for our added um, space objects array. So we're going to do subtraction sign and this mutable array. And we're going to write added space objects. And we can say if not, so if this does not exist, we're going to be able to do added space objects. And we're going to write curly braces and we're going to write added space objects is equal to NS mutable array alloc in it. And then we'll return our added space objects. So this, again, this syntax with this underscore might look a little funky, but it's another way we can access property names that we've set up inside of our header file. But because we're using it inside of our getter, we have to use the underscore as opposed to the self syntax we've been so familiar with inside of all of our other methods uh, inside of a class. So let's prove that this works. So we can go ahead and remove the earlier instantiation code we wrote. So let's go into view did load and we can remove self.plants and this array alloc in it because we're going to do that with our getter up here. So we're going to create our NS mutable array here. And we can also scroll down into our add space object and remove this as well. And we'll be able to access this added space object. So when we say self.added space objects, we'll call this method. And what will happen is it'll say if the instance variable isn't set up or you don't have an NS mutable array allocated and initialized for it, do that and then return uh, that instance variable. So let's go ahead and run this application and confirm that everything still works the same way. And as soon as, there we go, there my simulator's coming up. Sometimes it just takes a second to load. 
And we see that my planets array must be working because I'm able to see all my planets here. And I can add another one, so let's just do Pluto, and I'm not going to include any additional information here, just so we can get something in to prove that it works. And we see that Pluto now populates as well, so my added space objects array is also still working properly using lazy instantiation. I will mention that it's not required that you understand lazy instantiation in, able, in order to code iPhone applications, but it is a fairly popular design pattern. So if you plan on delving further into code, it's really handy to get used to that, this design, as well as understand the ideas behind getters and setters. But we'll continue talking about these uh, ideas as the course progresses.